chaos when they try the hero, and I figure I might as well. Unfortunately, I couldn't take off my shells here, so I'll just have to deal with the ears. Um, today, we're going to talk about... I'm in the studio this time. It's my turn. Uh, wish me luck. The topic today is based on uh, a uh, survey done by Fox News regarding the number of people in the United States... That while religious participation is on the law uh, on the dropping, the number of people that are becoming uh, spiritual is on the rise. And the first question is: is what's the difference between religion and spirituality? Well, first thing is religion is usually a codified set of norms, policies, procedures such as a magisterium, a documentation that explains what the church officially believes and it's documented in the faith system. Spirituality traditionally doesn't have this. Um, it's more of something that is what a person believes intrinsically or internally. I hate wigs. Oh, God. Anyway, so the, the thing is, is that when you're dealing with the spirituality realm, is that there's um, no structure, there's no codified rules. So everybody's faith is different. Faith and spirituality kind of go together. Because when you think about what faith is, when you say you, you believe in a certain routine, for example, I mean, I've heard jokes about this, but I might as well say it is somewhat serious. If you believe in the flying spaghetti monster... If you believe in the Flying Spaghetti Monster, and yes, there is a church of the Flying Spaghetti Monster, which makes it a religion, but so before it was a church, it was an idea, okay? So, that was a faith, or spiritual belief, that there was a Flying Spaghetti Monster, okay? Now, it doesn't make any sense to me, but that's because our faith system is different. Um... There are also uh, organizations that use religion as a club to cause harm to other people. Um, we see this over and over again uh, in different organized religions. Organized religions, as I said, are the ones that create the roles of magisterians, policies, catechisms, documents, usually have elected leaders and other things, which is really different. And, uh, you know... It's weird. They just never got into it. It does the um. So it turns out even atheists, at least a small portion of them, are also beginning to explore spirituality. Also, uh, at another related topic, a tarot reader herself actually wanted to know from God if tarot reading is acceptable to Christ and he responded by revealing a message to her and said there's nothing wrong if tarot reading is used in a positive way however tarot readings can also be used for bad things too which can create all kinds of nasty surprises and right now Rusty is going to be like what the hell are you doing <laughs> stupid cat yeah, he's here too. Um, so, so what exactly is my faith system? Well, my faith system is one where we all come from the divine source, mother and father God. And that there is a mother God or Asna or Asherah is indeed the divine queen of he heaven. And she does go by a variety of names over the years. From, of course, from Ashra, Asna, some people say Sophia, some say Hathor, some even say she's Frigg, is there Athena, uh, the wife of uh, Zeus. But the point is, is there's many Parthenons, and me and Michelle believe in a Parthenon that is more closer to that of the Canaanite concept where Yahweh and Mother Asna or Ashura are together, or at least they're working together. 
Are they still together as a couple? Well, uh, that's a good question, because if you go back to the Abrahamic phase, which a lot of Judaism is based upon in the Canaanite teachings, the answer is, nope, not anymore. They have actually kind of been separated by the Hebrew priests who wanted an almighty God of all, and they did create that. The problem was, in doing so, they threw out the divine feminine in their faith system. Uh, which, unfortunately, has carried over to Islam as well, which really kind of, you know, sucks. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it just sucks. You know, it doesn't work for me. It doesn't work for Michelle. It doesn't work for anyone else. Um, but, you know, each to their own. As Michelle also remind me, we're cooking dinner, so I got to keep this short because... Michelle doesn't want to burn her burgers. She's making uh, two plain cheeseburgers tonight. So. <laughs> and she put them in the oven so that they can cook. Now, you might see why she put them in a the toaster. Well, because, first of all, the pan she likes to use doesn't quite fit. It's small, but it's not small enough. And she doesn't want to get the main... Pan that comes with the toaster oven all greasy. She hates greasy pans, so <laughs> that's why. Okay, but let me get back to the work here. The thing is, is that so people in America do have a faith, are starting to develop into spirituality and are starting to dismiss themselves from organized religion. However, there is also a lot of confusion regarding different faith systems. So some structures make sense and some make none at all. So which is it? Do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe in the Holy Trinity? Do you think there really is such a thing called the Holy Trinity? If there isn't, the war, how is the Godhead set up in your faith system? Me and Michelle have already decided that the whole concept of the Holy Trinity as taught by the Catholic Church doesn't make any sense. Okay, first of all, the Father, Yahweh, is not the Son, and the Son is not the Father. And the Holy Spirit, it's just supposed to be what? The force of God? It is, wait a minute, that don't make any sense. God acts, Son acts, the Holy Spirit acts. Is the Holy Spirit really named for us now? Just because it kind of makes sense in a way, if it makes any sense to you. Well, anyway, we believe that. We believe that the Holy Spirit is actually Mother God. It's just easier for us to explain it to ourselves because we see in the Old Testament where the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, which is worshipped and glorified as... Yeah, taught. By the way, we'll have to explore that some more. But the point is, is that there's a lot of other things going on. All right, let's talk about something else right now. It's obviously, you can hear, I see I have the hair piece on. What do you think of the hair? I honestly think it looks cute. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's true. Michelle kind of likes it too, I think. But, unfortunately... It looks really cute with the ears. Um, the problem is, is that this hair is very heavy. And it's starly. Very starly. It's not real hair. And so, um, it's just really kind of cute. But, uh, but anyway, the point is, is that this is the first time I ever worn a wig on this video. And... This is the first time I actually did a video on this camera, on this studio by myself, without Michelle basically being there to kind of coach me as we go along. And so I'm just getting a little confused. Brian K. kept saying, is, oh, I always hit a bell on me. Well, this is the closest you got, so take it with a grain of salt. It's kind of hard. You got it. A very, very, very powerful person that you work with that shares the body with you 
And there's got to be compromises that are made to make it work. And yeah, it's it's weird. It's true. But either way, um, so how should you learn more about yourself and your faith system? I can't tell you. I I really don't know. There's so much to learn. There's so much to know. Me and Michelle are still going through so many documents from Celia Fenn, Lightworkers.org, to Sunfell, to um, Gosia and the Galactic Council, and a whole bunch of documents every night. It's getting exhausting. It's just a lot of research. So here's the first thing I'm going to tell you. They're going to see some big changes coming. Michelle said that over and over again. So I'll just keep it short. The most important thing you got to do is keep your head on your shoulders and don't panic. There's going to be changes that are going to cause a lot of upheaval. And that's the most important thing. You got to keep your head on your shoulders and aim high. Think for the goal of bringing the positive energies in. This is the negative entities are going to try to screw you up. This is again where religion, which has become the weapon of the 3D persona, persona has come in. Uh, if what I mean by that is take a look at the typical discussion of the end times. All the time you see Catholic, oh, all these churches say, "Oh, if you are not truly one with God, then you're damned to the fires of hell, and you're going to burn for eternity." Lovely. <laughs> Oh, then, then there's a church called Predestination, and the Calvin, George John Calvin believed that only God knows if you're going to go to heaven or hell. So, therefore, be in your best behavior. That's nice. So, if I'm on my best behavior, I'm going to still end up in the smoking section? What good is that? That doesn't sound like a loving God to me. That sounds like a God that basically just picks his... He picks his friends. Or some will say, oh, yes, by the way, and the rapture comes, all the Christians that truly believe in Christ will be reason, will be brought to heaven before the great tribulation. That's good. Another one says, well, regardless about the, um, your Christian or not, you still got to live the tribulation. Why would God want to make me suffer? That don't make sense. What is this logic here? Come on, people. Get with the program. It makes no sense. Why would God want me to suffer? If I'm one of his chosen ones, why would he want me to suffer like that? Then if you think in clean thoughts, then you're damned to the fires of hell. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. First of all, everybody in the world thinks on clean thoughts. I don't think I know of anybody in the world... That I know of any all that has never had unclean thoughts of such things as jealousy or, you know, envy or hate or, or feeling angry or even more serious sins than that. No, I've never seen anyone like that. Maybe in some universe, but not here. So, I'll say... Start again, please, because I don't think a lot of those people realize that they're going to say that everybody is perfect. Who's Well, guess what? No one's perfect. Uh, everybody who has fallen short of glory of God is doomed to the fires of hell. No, 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 no. Our only way to salvation is through Christ Jesus. Okay, I'll go there to a point. Because what if you don't believe in Christ Jesus? Then you're screwed. All right, so that ain't going to work either. But well, what about if the combination? Let me explain. You love God. You love the Father. You love the Divine Son, Jesus of Christ, Jesus of Nazareth. You accept that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and your salvation. You go to church every Sunday, for example. You receive the body and blood of Christ. You go to communion. You go to confession. You do reconciliation. You do all this stuff, as Michelle talks about. And then, do you mean to tell me in some churches that that's not good enough? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't get that. How could that not be good enough? 
Because the problem is, is that you're missing one thing. Are you doing because you truly believe? Or are you doing it because it's just tradition? Now, if it's tr just tradition, going through the motions, they ain't going to cut it. If you truly believe, that's a completely different story. If you truly believe, hey, God's gonna, God is going to keep you in his, his, his notebook. He's going to keep you on his side. But what if you never went to church? What if you never went to confession? But you truly believe in the Son of God. Are you going to go to hell? Why would a loving God that truly loves his children want to send his kids to hell? You know what? He don't. You know who sends the kids to hell? You do. Because you think you're not good enough. So you feel that you're not worthy to receive the kingdom of heaven. But you know what? I'm going to tell you a secret. You are because mother and father God love you divinely. And they know that you're not perfect. And they know the earth is tough. They know the earth classroom is a hard place. If you ever have problems with things in life, just go ahead and say to the Lord God, Hey, you know what? I think I messed up over here. Could use a little helping hand. And you know what? They'll help you. They'll help you. And they'll be there with you to help you overcome your deficiencies. That is what it takes in this day and age. Oh, yes. Make sure to keep, try, and this is a magic word, try, try to keep your heart pure. How do you do that? First of all, accept that you're humble, that you're human, that you have flaws and mistakes. Be honest with your mistakes. And be honest when you're saying to see other people who cause mistakes against you. Don't get mad and think that you're holier than thou. That ain't going to help you. If you see someone makes a mistake, for example, on the job, and it's going to affect you at work, just be honest with them. Say, I'm sorry, John, but, you know, you measured the wrong side. You measured the, the, measure, the dimensions wrong, and, and now the appliance that I ordered isn't going to fit there, and I have to get another one that was going to fit. But maybe on the other hand, given whatever nature was that caused the mismeasurement, maybe we can work around it. That's called working out a team. Well, guys, it's time to go because it's time to eat. So for now, thank you, everybody, for coming. It's time for us to wrap this up. So stay out of trouble. I did say it was dinner time. So bye-bye, guys.